Okay, hello everybody and uh, welcome to this OSHA Vault virtual webinar. Today we're going to talk about refits in particular and I think that that's going to be quite interesting for the most of you. So a little bit about Ocean Vault. Um, so we are a manufacturer of, of electric and hybrid propulsion systems. We were founded in 2004 by Janne Chelman. We are located in, in Vantaa, Finland, close to the airport. And uh, we have uh, 27 employees currently, um, 24 of them are in Finland and uh, three of of us are in, are in the States. <clears throat> um, our main segments are monohulls and uh, multi-hulls, um, obviously sailboats, and uh, then uh, light displacement motorboats as well. So to kick things off, um, what is electric boating? The electric motors, they are, extremely simple to use. Um, they are always on. So even though you would be out in the sea and there would be an emergency situation, it's very easy. You just click open the control lever and um, you can then do the emergency maneuvers, which is usually not the case if you have a diesel, for instance, because why would you have the, the diesel engine running um, when you're sailing? Then obviously, the electric motors are maintenance free and um, they're also emission free. And uh, even though you would opt for a hybrid system, um, the emission difference is roughly 30 to 60 percent compared to your, your diesel engine. Um, <clears throat> then we get a lot of questions about how do we measure the, the power um, that we that we have and how do how does that compare to a, a diesel engine um so one kilowatt is roughly two and a half to three horsepower um in torque now <clears throat> this is because obviously the electric motor the torque profile is very different from what it is on a diesel engine so what this means is that if you have a 10 kilowatt electric motor, for instance, um, it is suitable for a boat that has roughly around 30, a 30 horsepower diesel engine. And uh, obviously <clears throat> one of the big benefit, which is in the core DNA of, uh, of electric motor is that it also works as a hydro generator. Um, so basically it's already by definition, it has two uses. So you can use it as your main propulsion motor, or then you can use it as well as your hydro generator, which obviously gives you then um, more autonomy when you are sailing, and especially on, on longer legs. So if you're, for example, uh, crossing the Atlantic, um, you don't necessarily need a generator to as a backup uh, for creating electricity on board. So what boats are the most suitable? So in our case, um, it would be sailboats from 30 to 60 feet. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's a um, monohull or multi-hull and uh, as well than uh, light displacement motorboats. And the things to take into account when um, planning or um, thinking about converting your boat to electric is the existing engine. So if you have a 45 horsepower diesel, for instance, um, then you can go um, into our configurator, for instance, and put in your boat, um, boat specs in there, and it will give you a 15 kilowatt motor, for example. And, um, um, and that goes pretty much bolt, as a bolt on to the existing uh, motor bed, unless you have a special type of, of, of engine solution at the moment. Um, then of course, range expectation is one of the big ones. So um, typically 
pure electric boats make sense uh, if the boat is around 35 to 45 foot um, and it's roughly around 10 to well let's say max 10 tons uh, over that sure uh, we could build a very big battery bank um, but it goes would make then probably more sense to to go with the hybrid system um, <clears throat> and then with this comes the space requirements so um, please have a look around the boat and and um, try to visualize that where uh, it would make most sense to for example put the batteries um, the motor is simple it goes where it has been before uh, in 99 percent of the cases um, but then also if it's a generator um, that's one thing to to have a look at that what size of a generator is possible to put in um, and um, and as well the the, the chargers um, but this is usually then that you have already for example asked us for a quotation and then we have given you a indicative specification for it and from there uh, we can send over the dimensions for you to sort of do a quick measurement on on uh, <clears throat> to see for example where the generator would, would fit and also the batteries so here we have a full infrastructure of a let's say fully loaded system so if we start from number one um, that is the DC generator. So one big difference, let's say from, or comparing to a normal, normal uh, boat setup is that we don't use AC gensets, um, we use DC gensets. And the reason for it, is, uh, for it is that it makes the whole electrical side of things a lot easier because they are 48 volt the generators. And uh, it just means that the efficiency is a lot higher um, because in the AC genset, you would have to go from the generator to the charger and then to the batteries. Uh, but with the DC gensets, you can go directly to the batteries, um, which makes a lot of sense uh, in our case, because that truly makes it the hybrid system. Um, so if we would go with an AC um, genset, um, we would basically tear mm -hmm. and wear the um, the charger and the inverter on the on the generator very fast so it wouldn't really make sense uh, then for simpler let's say range extending uh, situations so if you just want to give a little bit of range more uh, then it's obviously fine to to have a ac genset um, <clears throat> so then if we move to number two propulsion batteries um, they're always 48 volts. Um, and um, in the picture, for instance, here, uh, it's an MG battery bank. Uh, they are 24 volt modules, uh, then connected up to 48 volts. Um, <clears throat> then uh, the third one is the battery connection box um, slash BMS. So, so in this case, it would be the master BMS. Um, <clears throat> And um, then the next important is obviously the charger. So we use Victron chargers. So there is then an abundance of, of different types. So we have normal chargers, the Scuola TGs, or then the, then the uh, Multipluses and Quattros, which are then combi charger inverters. Um, then it obviously has the motor controller, so number eight. Um, and uh, we have two types. We have air-cooled and liquid-cooled. Um, this is a Servo Prop 15 system, so it's, uh, so it's liquid-cooled. Um, then all of our systems come with, with the control lever display. Um, then the remote can as the remote system monitoring and diagnostics, which is based on the Victron VRM platform. Um, then if you want to, you can also get it with uh, solar panels and um, then uh, MPPT. Uh, we don't actually supply the solar panels because that's 
mainly then to do with or it's very boat specific so we don't supply those but we do supply the mppt which is then fully integrated into our system um and then besides those um we also supply the obviously the, the motor system and then uh, the dc dc converter so the dc dcs are then for your house battery and they sort of work like um the alternator of your diesel engine so they cut down it from 48 volts to either 24 or 12 volts depending on your your uh, uh, house voltage so um then when we look at the installation uh, there are a couple of things to consider with the materials so well fiberglass that's by far the the simplest and uh, well wood is also uh simple uh with wood is the only thing to consider is is that the um, uh, most of the, the the electronics are not ip67 so please make sure that they stay dry um with aluminium it's just the grounding, so please make sure that um, that, the, that there are there are no electrical leakages, and uh, well, the, basically the same thing goes with carbon fiber as well. Um, the since it's forty eight volts, it is very safe, so you don't have to be a, a certified electrician to to do the installation, um, and uh, also the the steps are fairly straightforward. Um, so then I already touched a little bit about the, the space requirements. So the motor basically, well, that goes where the old motor was. So is it had then been a sail drive or a shaft drive? Usually um, that's the place or they will go directly onto those. Um, <clears throat> then the for the battery location, as a general rule of thumb, uh, the balance of the boat should try to be kept the same. Um, but if there are any changes in terms of of um, of the of, of the place that where you would like to put the batteries, usually the rule of thumb is to put them closer to the mast because obviously the keel is there, so uh, it usually makes the boat more planted. Um, then if you opt for a hybrid system, then the actually, or actually you should start from, from looking at where can the generator be fitted. Um, the gensets are usually a bit bigger than they would be on the, on the AC side. So let's say that you have a 45 foot boat. Um, they would usually have a AC genset of maybe six, um, kilovolt tampers, um, but with uh, DC, because it's mainly used them for propulsion, um, they might be from eight to 11 kilowatts, depending on, on, the, on the speed and uh, range expectations, because the generator is always uh, sized to the cruising speed. Um, the same thing goes then for solar panels so obviously there is on a sailboat there is plenty of options where to put them um so you have the the main sail for instance is a good one um the deck is the obvious one but then also if you have a bimini or or um or then um, movable um flexible solar panels um, those could also be put on the sides of the boat for instance over the railings etc So then, um, what motor system or motor would, would fit your boat best? So um, ob the obvious ones are sail drives and shaft drives, and that is, I mean, determined with the existing motor system. Uh, there are some cases where we have actually changed from shaft drive. So the boat used to have a shaft drive system, 
to a server system. And the reason for that was simply because um, the cell drives have better regeneration capabilities and the overall efficiency of the, of the drive is a little bit better um, on, at the propeller, I mean. The motors themselves, they work roughly at the same efficiency, which is around 95%. So there, there isn't really a difference, but then from a hydrodynamical point of view, the sail drive is better than a shaft drive because of the angle of the prop um, compared to the water flow. Um, but then in case you have, let's say you have an outboard, um, so you never had an inboard uh, engine, uh, then it would, I would say that the pod motor would be the most suitable. They're extremely simple to install, um, but pod motors are not really meant uh, for bigger boats. So I would say that it's them for the smaller side or a smaller section. So let's say from 20 to maybe 25, maximum 30 foot. Um, that's the, let's say the optimal uh, range for, for pod motors. Um, I'm not aware of a pod motor that really does regeneration. Um, plus that they used to be, or most of them are fixed props. So um, there is some added drag from that. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you if there is no space for an inboard motor and it used to have a, a, a outboard, uh, then it makes a lot of sense to go with the pod motor. So then, for the power management system, and uh, this is specifically the difference between a pure electric system and then a hybrid system. So. Um, <clears throat> As mentioned before, pure electric systems, um, the sweet spot range, if you put it that way, is 35 to 45 foot. Obviously, it can be bigger, but it's more weight um, restricted than anything, because obviously, the more weight you have, the more uh, the, the consumption will be. So I would say that the optimal or the maximum sort of weight is around 12 tons. Uh, over that, sure, it is possible, um, but if we have, let's say, um, six and a half knots of boat speed and uh, you want to go for, let's say, 30 or 40 miles, the battery banks get very, very big in those cases. So um, <clears throat> the, the pure electric ones are, are for 35 to 45 foot, uh, foot boats and um, the maximum weight, I would say, is around 12 tons. Um, then for the hybrid systems, well, with hybrid systems, it's obviously uh, anyone's, it, it suits basically all, all of the, all of the boat sizes. Of course, then for the smaller boats, so let's say 30 foot boats, uh, there is usually then a space restriction, which, make, which makes it a little bit trickier to install the generator. Um, but I mean, the, the hybrid systems, their core functionality goes around that you have, a, you have a specific cruising speed. So let's say it's six knots, and uh, <clears throat> then we do the resistance calculation and we make sure that the boat can do six knots at, uh, with the gen set on. And uh, there you go. You basically have a range then, which is as long as you have diesel. And uh, please bear in mind that that you also have then the battery bank. So, so it's not, uh, the consumption is not as linear as it is with, uh, with the diesel engine because the genset in the hybrid system will not be running all the time. As soon as it hits its 80% threshold on the battery state of charge, it will shut down and then it will run for pretty much 45 minutes and uh, uh, pure electrically, I mean, and then it will go on again. So there are, there's quite a bit of saving um, and obviously comfort because nobody wants really to listen to a diesel. Um, <clears throat> but the, then we look at the main or the core differences between these two. Um, with a pure electric system, you are obviously a lot more reliant on the on the on the solar panels and 
especially then also the, the hydro regeneration. Um, so on a pure electric system, you need to have uh, auxiliary power, power sources. And fortunately, the regeneration in our ocean world systems is very good. So um, seven knots of boat speed, which is quite sustainable for, for most of the, let's say 35 plus um, sailboats, you're going to do at least 750 watts with, uh, with the servo prop. And uh, even with the shaft drives uh, at seven knots, you will do roughly around 500 watts of power. So uh, it's usually plenty to, to, to at least keep the state of charge. And um, uh, on the shaft drives and then with the servo prop, you're obviously also then charging. Um, so um, <clears throat> the rule of thumb is that if you use the motor for one hour, then you need roughly around three hours uh, to top up the battery uh, with the servo prop. So um, <clears throat> then a little bit about the advantages for the skipper. So um, <clears throat> one of the not so obvious is, is motor sailing. So um, basically, if, if you are in very light winds and uh, you need, want to extend the, extend the range um, for whatever reason, um, one nifty thing to do is, is to motor sail. So basically, um, you hoist the main sail, um, or then if you have a code zero or, or a Genoa, uh, you uh, give them, you, you hoist that, and then you give a small push from the, from the motor. And uh, instead of going just with the motor, let's say two and a half, three knots, uh, suddenly with the sail assisting, um, you're going five knots. And um, you can basically quadruple the, the range by doing this. Um, and obviously that's without no, no noise. So, uh, so uh, it's a way of also cheat in the, <laughs> in the races. Um, then obviously there is, there are no range or operation uh, restrictions when you're sailing, especially if you're regenerating, um, you are putting in energy to the battery bank. So you're effectively uh, increasing your motoring range uh, while you're sailing. Um, then, of course, as mentioned before, since the motor is always on, uh, you have the, the instant torque and power at, their, your, at your disposal at any time. Um, <clears throat> then one big factor is the easy handling. So because the reliability and the instant torque and power, it's very easy to handle uh, when harbor maneuvering, for instance. Um, then of course the electric motors are silent, so that means that the the, the deck communication is a lot more is a lot more pleasant than with the diesel, um, and it's also um, a safety concern. So when you can when you can clearly communicate with the person who assists you uh, in docking, for instance, it makes it a lot safer as well. Um, then, well, this is something that we already touched on, but um, the generator only runs when it's needed. So the system is optimized in a way that uh, it only really runs when it's necessary. Um, and then because of this, you have a complete power management. So you have uh, the sustainable energy sources, so wind, sun, and then uh, as a main uh, auxiliary power source, you would have the hydro regeneration. And also, if you have a if you have a generator on board, uh, it all complements into a into a system where you don't really need to have any other power sources. So. Then the big, big question, why should you switch to electric now? So the technology is pretty much done for sailboats. Um, there is no need for, for uh, or it's, it's not a question of need. Uh, there is not a must for, let's say, um, 
higher or higher density batteries as it would be with plain motorboats, for instance. Uh, so the proof of concept has been done uh, with at least a thousand boats now. Um, and with this, you get more living space um, because the, the, the components in general are smaller and because they are modular, uh, they can be placed in, in different uh, places. Um, it's not like a big block. So basically a diesel engine or a, a fuel tank. Um, so you can place them uh, into more convenient places. Um, <clears throat> then the one big one is more comfort. So um, because you have energy autonomy, um, this means that if you are, for instance, staying in anchor for a longer period of time, the main propulsion battery bank works then as a massive uh, house battery bank uh, with the generator if that's installed. So it makes that you have a lot of quiet hours and it means that you can install quite easily there air conditioning, uh, induction stove tops, bigger fridges, uh, freezers, water heaters. I mean, the list goes on and on. But with this, you get a lot more comfort on board. So you can basically use it as a, um, as you would at home. Um, and as already touched upon, so the complete power management. So you're not relying on, on just a single source. Um, you have plenty of sources to choose from. So is it then shore power? Um, is it then the generator, uh, hydro regeneration, solar panels? All of these um, assist to uh, one big uh, autonomous package. Um, then the one big thing is obviously the maintenance. So the only thing you really have to do the maintenance on during the season is um, is to check that, uh, this, for instance, in sail drives, is the oil uh, in good shape in the in the sail drive. Um, then, uh, yeah, basically change the propeller anodes, and that's it. Uh, there isn't really anything else to be done. Of course, if you have then a generator that requires its its normal um, diesel maintenances, so filters and and whatnot. Um, but because of then the, the energy autonomy, um, you get more redundancy because there is not, there's not that a single sort of thing to be broken down, which would sort of take out the whole system. Um, and plus that there are what three moving parts in an electric motor. So it's by design simpler than a, a starter motor on diesel. So less mechanical parts to break down means better safety um, and therefore also better redundancy. 